Hi there. You'll often hear in the media people talking about the need for balanced growth, sustainable growth and inclusive growth. Maybe even all three at the same time. But what do these terms mean? Let's just spend a couple of minutes looking through them. So balanced growth is the idea that the growth that a country achieves needs to have a rough degree of balance. But what are the balance? Well, for example, balance between industries. Uh, a country might, for example, be too dependent on primary products as a source of exports and tax revenue. Of course, that leaves the country vulnerable or exposed to volatility in commodity prices. A country may be uh, too heavily dependent, for example, on financial services and banking. And that can leave themselves exposed to global financial shocks. That was probably true in the UK, as certainly in 2008. Regional balance is the idea that across a country, you need to have a reasonable degree of balance in per capita incomes and jobs, investment opportunities across the regions. The UK government, for example, is now focusing on its Northern Powerhouse project, amongst other ideas, to try and ad address this idea of regional disparity. Often in developing countries, there's a disconnect between economic growth in urban areas, fast growing cities, and the much lower per capita incomes and employment opportunities in rural areas. So in developing countries, governments are seeking a better urban rural balance. We might think about the difference between internal and external balance. So for example, fast growing countries may suck in lots of imports and cause a trade deficit, whereas a more balanced growth strategy would try to balance the growth of exports and imports to maintain a degree of equilibrium on the balance of payments. It's also important to get an appropriate balance between spending on consumer goods and services and spending on capital investment. So for example, in China in recent times, household consumption has been a fairly slow, low percentage of GDP, around 35-40%, whereas capital investment has been closer to 50%. The Chinese economy is in the, the early stages of a transition, a rebalancing process, away from a heavy dependency on exporting and investment towards a greater focus on domestic consumption. That's what we mean by balanced growth. Sustainable growth is a really essentially an environmental uh, concept, first and foremost. But it's been broadened to include other aspects as well. Sustainable growth in environmental terms is growth that meets the needs of current generations without limiting or sacrificing the scarce resources available to meet the needs of future generations. And of course, this is an enormous issue, how best to incentivize and grow and nurture sustainable uh, in uh, industries, particularly aspects of renewable energy and sustainability in, in farming. But sustainability can also have, for example, a macroeconomic dimension. To what extent, for example, is a credit fueled boom sustainable? Well, we know from past experience that housing booms and property booms, other asset price uh, explosions are nearly always unsustainable. Financial bubbles burst. There's a wider need for a greater degree of financial stability within the economy to make growth more sustainable. So there's all kinds of issues there to do with sustainability. In other words, that's looking at growth, not just from a current generation's point of view, but from future generations' perspective. Inclusive growth is really about distribution. It's a focusing on the question, who gains from growth? Who are the winners and who are the losers from periods of increased prosperity? Inclusive growth seeks to achieve a position where the benefits of growth in terms of per capita incomes are more widely distributed. And one measure of that could be to focus on median per capita income rather than just the mean income per head. Inclusive growth would make uh, uh, increased emphasis on progress in reducing relative poverty as well as extreme poverty. And essentially it's about improving opportunities for all groups. In particular, for example, uh, improving the economic and social opportunities for disadvantaged communities. Inclusive growth favours often direct intervention to tackle discrimination and labour market and investment barriers for affected groups. So when we talk about economic growth, we can essentially disaggregate and start to think a little bit more about the subtleties and the nuances of growth. And one way of doing that is to make a distinction between balanced sustainable and inclusive growth. Thanks for joining in. See you again sometime soon.